Jamaica, an island bathed in sunshine and vibrant culture, carries a past etched with both hardship and resilience. For centuries, this Caribbean jewel was a prized possession of the British Empire, its fertile lands exploited for the lucrative sugar trade. The story of Jamaica's journey to independence is inseparable from the struggle against colonial domination and the enduring legacy of slavery. From the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1494, Jamaica's indigenous Taino population was decimated by disease and forced labor. The Spanish, followed by the British in 1655, established vast sugar plantations, fueling a demand for enslaved Africans who would tragically become the backbone of the island's economy. Generations toiled under brutal conditions, their forced labor enriching the coffers of the British Empire. Resistance, however, was as much a part of Jamaica's story as sugarcane. From small acts of defiance to large-scale revolts, enslaved Africans refused to accept their fate passively. Runaway communities known as Maroons fought for their freedom in the island's rugged interior, their bravery a constant source of inspiration. The road to freedom was long and arduous, paved with the sacrifices of countless individuals who dared to dream of a Jamaica free from the shackles of colonialism. Their struggle culminated in the island's hard-won independence in 1962, a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Jamaican people. The year 1834 marked a turning point in Jamaica's history, the abolition of slavery. After centuries of unspeakable cruelty and injustice, the enslaved Africans on the island finally tasted the sweetness of freedom. The British Parliament's decision to abolish slavery throughout its empire was met with jubilation by those who had long endured the horrors of forced labor. However, emancipation did not magically erase the deep scars of slavery. The newly freed people received no compensation for their years of toil, forcing many to remain on the plantations as laborers under a system of apprenticeship that differed little from slavery. Land ownership, the key to true economic independence, remained largely in the hands of the white planter class. The end of slavery did, however, open up new possibilities. Freed people established their own communities, built churches and schools, and began to assert their cultural identity with a fervor that had been suppressed for generations. The seeds of a new Jamaican society, one built on the foundations of freedom and self-determination, were sown. The abolition of slavery was a momentous event, a victory against oppression that resonated far beyond Jamaica's shores. It marked the beginning of a new chapter in the island's history, one in which the descendants of enslaved Africans would begin the long and arduous journey towards equality and self-governance. The struggle for true equality in post-emancipation Jamaica was far from over. The Morant Bay Rebellion of 1865 stands as a stark reminder of the deep-seated inequalities that continued to plague the island. Led by Paul Bogle, a Baptist deacon and advocate for the rights of black Jamaicans, the rebellion erupted from the simmering frustrations of the island's black majority. Bogle, along with other leaders like George William Gordon, a mixed-race landowner and politician, called for land reform, fair wages, and greater political representation for black Jamaicans. Their pleas fell on deaf ears, met with indifference and hostility by the colonial authorities. The rebellion itself was brutally suppressed by the British, resulting in the deaths of hundreds of black Jamaicans and the execution of Bogle and Gordon. The events at Morant Bay sent shockwaves through the island and across the British Empire. It exposed the raw wounds of colonialism and the urgent need for meaningful, social, and political change. While the Morant Bay Rebellion was ultimately unsuccessful in achieving its immediate goals, it stands as a powerful symbol of resistance against oppression. It forced the British government to reevaluate its policies in Jamaica, ultimately leading to the establishment of Crown Colony government in 1866. Jamaica's becoming a Crown Colony meant losing the large degree of self-government it had enjoyed since the late 17th century. Due to the strife, the Jamaican Assembly relinquished much of its power to the governor. Representative government was partly restored in 1884. After a long period of direct British colonial rule, Jamaica gained a degree of local political control in the late 1930s and held its first election under full universal adult suffrage in 1944. The late 19th and early 20th centuries witnessed the rise of a powerful movement for self-determination in Jamaica. The echoes of Morant Bay still resonated, fueling the desire for greater autonomy, 
and an end to colonial rule. At the forefront of this movement stood Marcus Garvey, a charismatic leader who would become a towering figure in the fight for black liberation, not just in Jamaica, but across the globe. Born in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica in 1887, Garvey's message of racial pride, self-reliance, and pan-Africanism struck a chord with millions of people of African descent who had endured centuries of colonialism and oppression. He founded the Universal Negro Improvement Association, which advocated for the advancement of black people worldwide and the creation of an independent black nation in Africa. Garvey's impact on Jamaica was profound. He instilled a sense of pride and self-worth in a people who had been systematically marginalized and denied their basic rights. His call for self-governance resonated deeply, laying the groundwork for the independence movement that would gain momentum in the decades to come. Although Garvey himself never lived to see Jamaica achieve independence, his legacy as a champion of black empowerment and self-determination continues to inspire generations of Jamaicans and people of African descent around the world. His words, up you mighty race, accomplish what you will, remain a rallying cry for those who dare to challenge the status quo and fight for a more just and equitable world. The winds of change sweeping across the globe in the aftermath of World War II carried with them the promise of independence for many colonized nations. Jamaica, too, felt the currents of this global movement. There was an increasing push for self-government fueled by dissatisfaction with the crown colony system and the hardships faced by the island's population. In 1938, widespread unrest and strikes led to the formation of the first labor unions and political parties. The formation of the People's National Party in 1938 under the leadership of Norman Manley marked a significant step towards self-governance. The PNP advocated for greater autonomy and social reform championing the rights of workers and the poor. A decade later, the Jamaica Labor Party emerged under the leadership of Alexander Bustamante, a charismatic trade unionist and cousin of Manley. Despite their rivalry, both parties shared a common goal, independence for Jamaica. In 1958, Jamaica joined the short-lived West Indies Federation, a union of British Caribbean territories intended to foster greater regional cooperation and self-governance. However, the federation was plagued by internal divisions and a lack of popular support, ultimately collapsing in 1962. Undeterred, Jamaica pressed ahead with its own independence aspirations, holding a referendum in which its people voted overwhelmingly in favor of severing ties with Britain. On August 6, 1962, the black, green, and gold of the Jamaican flag soared high as the island nation celebrated its hard-won independence. After more than three centuries of British rule, Jamaica was finally master of its own destiny. The air crackled with excitement and anticipation as Jamaicans from all walks of life embraced the promise of a brighter future. The early years of independence were marked by both optimism and challenges. Jamaica faced the daunting task of building a new nation, forging its own identity on the world stage while grappling with the legacy of colonialism. Economic disparities, social inequalities, and political tensions persisted, testing the resilience of the young nation. Despite these challenges, Jamaica made significant strides. The government invested heavily in education, health care, and infrastructure, seeking to create a more equitable society for all its citizens. Jamaica gained its independence in 1962, but like many former colonies, the British monarchy is the head of state. In 2012, the first female Jamaican prime minister, Portia Simpson Miller, called for Jamaica to cut all ties with Britain and ditch the monarchy. She said, We came on a long journey from slavery to adult suffrage to our independence, and we are now a nation. I believe our maturity is now saying that we should look to a form of government that would at this time take full charge of our destiny. In 2024, the Jamaican government is still examining how to cut ties with the British monarchy and become a republic. Meanwhile, Barbados cut ties and became a republic on the 30th of November, 2021. Jamaica's culture, from its vibrant music to its athletic prowess, gained international recognition, showcasing the island's unique identity to the world. The journey of a nation is never smooth sailing, and Jamaica has weathered its share of storms in the decades since independence. 
Economic recessions, natural disasters, and social unrest have tested the mettle of its people. However, through it all, Jamaicans have demonstrated a remarkable spirit of resilience, determination, and an unwavering belief in the promise of their nation. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this journey through Jamaica's road to independence. If you did, please like and share the video. Hit the bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe.